Yo, what's up, everyone? It's your boy. Today's video, I got an amazing video for you guys. It is Pac, my boy. Finished second place at the LCS, a 250 player online tournament with Virtual World. It was amazing. He did an absolutely incredible job. I know Virtual World ain't no pendulums. Virtual World ain't no pendulums, but it's still a pretty solid deck. Make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video. Figure out all the important text that he used for this deck. Make sure to check out his channel down below. So if you're ready for the video, smash the subscribe button. Make sure you get a beautiful trip gaming play on tripgaming.com. Up for the next two weeks only. We have $30 cloth mats on there. Amazing sales, so go check it out. Make sure to subscribe, not just to me, but also the pack who has an amazing YouTube channel himself. And with that being said, if you're ready for the video, let's go, baby. Let's go. It's virtual world time. All right, guys. So um, I decided to play eight hand traps. I think eight is like the optimal number. Um, like you could technically play three, 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 but like from a math perspective, eight I believe is a seventy percent chance to see one hand trap. And yeah, actually, it was like, yeah. I thought it was like still okay. Yo, the play, exact like, number, yeah, yeah. Like you could have played the third one. Yeah, yeah, the, that that yeah, was the exact but, number. If you want to open exactly one hand trap, it's eight hand traps. Yeah, yeah, because I honestly the reason why it's eight is because of a card you'll see later in the deck profile, but it's because I wanted to play like Call by the Grave, and all my hand traps were high impact. Ash obviously isn't high impact, but this card is actually. It's very strong because you draw a lot in the deck. So like you want to draw like cart like hand traps that are actually like pretty good as an additional interruption. And Ash was just like the most generic. Uh, and then for my virtual monster count, you play three of all of them. Um, some people have been playing two Nyang Nyang, but you have to play three of all of them. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with how the deck works, yeah, like me, uh, Nyang Nyang is basically yeah, it's a level <laughs> three psychic wind. Um, and when it's in the grave, you can special summon itself back whenever you normal or special a a level three monster so you can actually do some plays where like you can normal summon ash blossom trigger ning ning to like come back and then and then summon oh, summon that cool. so that, that's also an option um but this card is really insane because it when it gets banished right you can shuffle back any banished cards including face down ones off desire so there were plays where i would actually shuffle back my driver that i banished off desire to make gamma live uh, there were plays where like i would banish my extra deck Monsters in the graveyard off of Shen Shen and then put it back into my uh, extra deck using Yang Yang and then synchro summon again. So I, I made Croco Dragon like twice before. Nice. Um, Lili is really good. It's a double foolish burial, but it's not the best, but it's a really strong card with like the capital. But it's a double foolish burial. That's what the card does. Um, but it's a level six, so it's not like it's not like insane. Yeah. Um, the, um, and then the Lulu, normal summon in is, terms of like being yeah. like normal summon and play. Yeah. 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 Um, then you have Triple Lulu. This is like the best in the deck. I mean, this card is just, it's like engaged for the deck because <laughs> it searches you two cards if you open up with capital, right? But when you open up capital, you can dump a spell, add a monster, and then, and then the spell gets you another monster. So this card is just like ridiculous. It's a level three tuner, which is relevant because you can normal summon itself. Um, and so like, it, it's like really, really strong for, for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lao Lao is probably like the best one uh like the second best because it's a monster reborn yeah. from the graveyard and it helps you play through nib and you watch my game against cam in top four i made double vfd like i vfd the first time <laughs> i called light to bait nib if he had it and the second one i made a second vfd which plays around any interaction because vfd is a once per turn per card which is so dumb i, I don't know why they made the card once per turn per card but it is so you can make double vfd and call two attributes and your opponent just loses um, you have GG, which is uh, one of the best, the third best, I would say, because it's a card that ensures that if you're playing as like a zoo deck, you can play very conservative with GG because it keeps recurring back your uh, cards at end phase. So like it let this is a card that lets you play conservative and, and just play Croco Dragon control, which is like Croco Dragon trap control is like just insane against like back row decks. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I did. If you guys watch my zoo match um, in Swiss, you saw that all I did was just make Croco Draw, uh, Crocosaur. Draw two cards, keep a lot of cards in hand, recur back off GG at end phase, and then just keep like popping their cards. Yeah. And then that's how that's how you play the matchup. Because nice. Zoo loses to their normal summon, Pranks loses to their normal summon. Yeah. And even if he has barrage, right, or anything like that, you have you have two pops, and that's yeah. all you need. Like unless they sack you a monster reborn, like you should win. Nice. Um Call by the Grave is the card that I replaced for the third Ash. And I like this card because um it's really good against like dinos. It's, it can be used offensively, defensively. It's a card that you can draw off like 
proc or like uh, Coral or Stardust, and it just has like a lot of impact to like stop your opponents from playing. So I like this. Um, e Telly is just no brainer. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I play one E Telly, two Foolish Burial, because um, and and why I play two Foolish instead of three is is because you don't want to see multiples of Foolish Burial. It's also a fake Rota. This card is actually terrible. I don't want to play this card, but I'm forced to play it because the deck inherently breaks. Yeah. Um, the thing, the issue with Foolish Burial good is that it does help consistency. But when you dump the spell off your initial combo, your whole combo changes because now the spell that you dump going forward into the combo, you can't use it no more. So that's like definitely one of the issues with Foolish Burial Goods. But if that's your only way to play, then you have to play it. Yeah. Um, uh, Desires. Also, yeah, when you play two, you have a very low chance of seeing multiples, which is very key because it's a hard one to return. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't play the, uh, just in case someone might be wondering, I didn't play, uh, what is it, the Metaphose Fusion. Um, just, just because like, I mean, I theoretically could, because I, if I hard draw, I can do Kling Long, Banish, and then dump it. But I, I just didn't want to have any dead card at all. Like, I, the deck already breaks, Fox. and I just don't want to draw a Metaphor Fusion. Like, yeah. you can dump Metaphor Fusion from your hand if you have the spell, but you have to keep yeah. in mind, that means you're playing. If you're already playing, like, you're already winning. Um, and then you have three desires, because consistency, and the cards never matter. Oh, what's up, Nets? Um, you have play Quan Loon. Uh, because, I mean, not, not much to say, it's broken. Three spell, this card is tr insane, going second. And again, Dino, you can just Queen Long their UCT and just win. <laughs> uh, you can Queen yeah. Long the uh, Dryden, and then it forces them to pop it. Yeah. If they do pop it, you can banish it and search. And then you play Triple Trap because uh, you play Desires. And yeah, it can be a break, but when you hard draw it, it can also be a surprise. It's You want to low-key also hard draw it because um, it helps you. It's just like an insane card, and the yeah. fact that it's an Avarice and a pop, makes it like the modern day Dryden. It's just too insane. Mm -hmm. So I have a few questions um, now. So with all this, it, yep. so that all makes mm -hmm. sense. Uh, does every single build play uh, three of the trap and three desires, like every single build or just you? I think most lists, I'm assuming like, I haven't seen Nets yet who won the entire thing, but I'm assuming most of the Europeans played the same ratio as I did. I think if they were testing, I'm sure they came to the same realization I did that you have to max out on all of them for consistency mm -hmm. because it's the same logic with Queen Long, right? Like. You don't want to play three of this because it can brick it in your hand, but you definitely want some in your deck to dump, right? But if you open it, it means you can commit to like virtual world cards effects without using your normal summon. And it does it makes it so you don't lose your normal summon, which is important. Mm -hmm. But like the deck has six ways of doing that, right? It has the three capital and the three Quinn Long. So you have six ways to like make plays without your normal summon, which right. is important. Yeah. And if you hold the normal summon, sometimes like that can actually help you extend and make other plays. So oh, that, you, that's you like why. too, I guess. Like, um, not like somewhat like yeah exactly yeah all right, cool and then yeah some people are asking like oh like how do you play gamma with desires yo gamma is actually <laughs> the most insane offensive and defensive card like i don't care if i banish driver i'm always taking that high chance bro you, i saw the gamma, ash remember the ash oh, yeah. ash on desires and gamma that was yep. fire yep i was crazy and then the, the thing with gamma that people don't understand like how it's used defensively is it acts like call by the grave in the deck and, and what i mean by this is if your first virtual world card in hand resolves, yo, it's GG. But if it doesn't, it, it really, it's really awkward if you don't have any way to continue playing. So like you want your first virtual world card to resolve and then if they try to do anything, you chain gamma and then you, you're just like kind of in. Mm -hmm. The thing with a driver that if you hard draw it, you can always dump it off Kling Long, which is not bad, but driver is also a level six psychic. So there were times where I actually tribute the driver <laughs> just so I can get a level six. And then get, like make the VFD that way. So there's like ways to like play um, with it. So it's not the worst. Um, and I guess I'll go into the extra deck. Yeah. I think all these are quite mandatory except two. Uh, but Cloud Class is mandatory. You have to play it unless you play through Nib. Yeah. Um, Coral Dragon is uh, no brainer. Uh, Croc. Don't need to explain it. This card is actually broken against trap decks. Like I said, Croc. Yeah. Croc trap control is just GG. Uh, Stardust Charge is really good. It, it it's um it's effect second effect actually comes up a lot. People don't know this, but it can attack all special summon monsters your opponent control. Why that's relevant is because I played number thirty nine Utopia Beyond. Mm -hmm. and Utopia oh. Beyond, Beyond makes all your opponents monsters yeah. zero. It's a dragoon now. Yeah. So you make all their monsters zero, and then Stardust Charge attack everything. GG. <laughs> um, uh, Vermilion Mech uh is actually the MVP, and if you use this card skillfully, you will actually win a lot. And here's what I mean: if you guys watch my match in top eight. I did Vermilion Mech pop itself to add back Ash or like add back Lulu and it made my Gamma live. So that's a really heads up play that you can do. You can actually pop your own card. And there was times where I make Vermilion Mech to pop my own. I set my Quinglong, uh, make Vermilion Mech and then pop my own Quinglong and then banish the Quinglong to play. 
Nice. And it's like this card yeah. is actually like way better than people give it credit for. And like the uses of Vermilion Dragon Mech is actually insane. Like I said, there's ways where I literally pop this card to make Gamma live, add back Lulu because Lulu's a tuner. And then it's just so, so insane. Like I really, really like this card. Uh, Juju is actually an FTK against Zoo <laughs> because it can't be shown by battle card effects. I think they have zero outs. Um, this card is actually just insane. Like, and the fact that it sends is really important because it doesn't destroy, right? So. Uh, this card is like really really strong for that reason and it comes up in a combo too like it comes up in a combo where you need to make this um so that you can play around uh nibiru um yeah. so juju is really really good about this nice. um chen chen is also insane the fact that it recurs itself every turn and makes your trap life every single turn is just like too broken so i really really like this card um uh, omega i played because yeah. There are times where like I would make the Gamma and Driver and I want to basically punish my opponent 2x. Um, <laughs> the time, theoretically, you can cut the Omega because you don't actually make this card unless yeah. you have the Gamma. But I just find out that like, uh, I just want to punish my opponent a lot. And of course, it has a Graveyard effect. Uh, it has the effect to put back a Banished card back into the Graveyard, which allows you to actually um, uh, recur. Like you, It sets you up for Quinglong on the following turn. Um, and then, so it can put back use Quinglongs, but then it can also like in the graveyard shuffle back resources that you need back in the deck. And because with the Zyze, your deck gets pretty thin. Uh, you play Zeus, uh, this card is insane, I don't need to explain. Uh, you play Gaia Charger, which everyone bought out and I don't have an ulti copy, so uh, can someone send me one? Um, but you play this because in two interactions. So the first interaction is it gets you a, a fourth material for Zeus. Or it can uh, be, it gets you up to the second material for Fan Fan. So um, I'm, I'll explain that when we get to Fan Fan. But I play Utopia Beyond because it's a Dragoon out and it helps you win. So when you nib, I think Nesh did this, uh, Nets did this in the finals, but he was thinking about this play. Mm -hmm. Is the reason why you would put your opponent's Nibiru token in attack mode is because you can summon Utopia uh, Beyond, yeah. make their token zero, mm -hmm. and then just like destroy them. Yeah. Uh, next is Fan Fan. Uh, so Fan Fan is, uh, you can detach two. And it's a card your opponent control and one in their graveyard. So this card is really nice because against Dino, I made this and I banished their uh, miss in the grave and their UCT on the field after I negated it with Quinglong. Nice. Um, the other thing about this card against against Zudex is it has a second effect that's really relevant. And it says that if this XYZ summon card is destroyed by battle or by an opponent's card effect while in the main monster zone, you can summon two virtual monsters with the same type of attribute from your deck. And why this is important is because they just can't drive in this. Like nice. they cannot yeah. dry it in this card because if they do i go hella plus but yeah. if they don't dry it in this then i go fan fan banish their dry it on the field yeah. and then banish like any like whip tails or any like good card in their graveyard so it's just like really insane nice um, i i like fan fan a lot this card came up a lot for me uh break sword i never summoned i never made rank three xyz's um so that's why like the rank three and the omega were cards that i just never summoned yeah. or like sorry cards that i like isn't as mandatory, but I feel like you still need a rank three just in case you want to make Zeus. Yeah, I was gonna and say And do that, like yeah. kind of brick, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and like the we but the thing that's weird about Break Sword or like any rank three XYZs, or like even playing Jaja, is that like Zeus only has one effect, like it doesn't get two, so it's never like broken. Um, but Break Sword is like in theory like pretty good because it's uh, out to Mega Clops against like Zoo players who like somehow like I don't know why they would turbo out Clops and then just auto lose to, like this deck. Um. But yeah, there, there's that. Uh, and then you play two VFD because you actually make two. Some people are playing Edner Blotnir, but I think that VFD, double VFD is just better than Edner Blotnir um, because you actually can make two in a combo. Like I said, in the game against Cam, I literally made two VFDs. Like, it was just insane. Like he, he could Gamma one and I still activate the other one is still game. <laughs> um, and if he droplets, I have the trap. Like I made double VFD trap, which is just like, yeah, just if you have, there's just like no outs. Like, yeah. I just don't know a way to stop that, yeah. Bro, um, all, all I gotta say, bro, an amazing job, man. Like all your all your explanations seem on point. Like you actually knew you're like you've been testing this, and I knew you were testing this because when we were testing, you brought this deck out. So, bro, congratulations on your thing. Do you have anything last you want to say? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Oh yeah, side deck. Side deck. Oh yeah, we didn't um, even go to the side deck. For those yet. who yeah. are interested in the side deck, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so side deck is three lancer because it's insane against the mirror, insane against Dino. Don't need yeah. to explain yeah. the third ash because. Go, playing against his deck, uh, you want to have it. Ogre is really good. So this was my tech of choice. So yeah. uh, the reason why I played Ogre was because it was really good against Dragon Link and really good against Infernals. And you might be asking, like, Pac, you're like kind of insane. How is it actually good against those decks? 
Well, it's also a level three psychic tuner, which you can summon off the <laughs> telly. Um, not that you would most of the time, but it's it's like kind of like decent. Anyways, Ghost Ogre against Dragon Link. When they play 40 card Dragon Link, right? They don't play Dragon Ravine, which means if you Ogre Romulus, they search the, the equip spell that is now play. a dead card. Yeah. So Ogre acts as a gamma against Dragon Link when they play 40 cards and everyone who made top cut with Dragon Link did not play Ravine. So Ogre is just insane. It literally is an additional gamma. Yeah, um, so that's why I played this yeah, card. Same with and Infernoble. it's also like really good on Infernobles because no one expects this and they always use first effect of his soul Yeah. They always yeah. use first effect. Yeah. So I side this in and then this should like be decent. Uh, the reason why I didn't play like uh, a set card, Token Collector, which is probably one of the best against Infernal voice because I want something that was also good for Dragon Link. So I wanted, oh, yeah. I wanted the two hand trap to be good for both Dragon Link and Infernal because they're like the scariest matchups for me. Mm -hmm. I played Triple Imperm. Uh, it's just like more hand traps against like Infernal and Dragon Link. Like I said, I'm really scared of that deck. Mm -hmm. um, uh, three Twin Twister. It's better to play Twin than Cosmic in his deck because against Prank Kids, you can stand by face Twin Twister to hit their Pandemonium, and Twin Twister gives you the highest chance. Of hitting it if they were to set multiple cards um the other thing about twin twister that's also really good is it discards a card so you can discard queen long and then go plus mm -hmm. um and twister is also really good going first where uh against a zoo deck i made shen shen no i'm sorry i played against elic i went shen shen pass uh he went set four pass i'm like end phase <laughs> twin twister banish yeah. all his trap cards yeah so he just lost uh happy feather duster because uh i mean yeah. feather duster uh reboot because you kill them and pink, yeah. cause pink, yeah. Nice. So that's, that's it, guys. Thank you. Bro, bro, I gotta say, before we go, you're a beast, bro. Let's go. Good shit, man. Are we saying you're, you're yeah, a bro? Thank you, thank you, bro. Bro, is there any last uh, thing you want to say? Any shout outs? Um, no, shout, shout, I guess shout out to my team, Luxury Gaming. Uh, they did a good job. And shout out to all the, the judges, uh, Toast, shout out to uh, Nesh, everyone, Hani, who was singing calls and stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah, shout out to, to everyone. Uh, shout out to you, Triff. Um, and yeah, also shout out to, I guess, my YouTube channel, Self Plug. Uh, check that out. You guys will see a, a detailed description. Also explaining the deck. I feel like I did a really good job explaining it this time around already, but if you want to hear more about the deck and my thoughts on it in terms of like the metagame going forward, let me know and check out my channel in the description box as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. And oh, yeah, everyone. Also, shout out to Mathers21. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, shout out shout out. <laughs> but yeah, yo, everyone, thank you for watching. And, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>